Welcome back everybody. This is part two. If you didn't get to see part one of this painting, you can go back to my other videos and watch part one. Just going in now a little bit darker um, with my greens and a little bit of gray added in. Going to get a darker area, a hint of some trees and hills, just adding in some layers. And again, it's a few minutes in between painting and letting these dry before I add another coat. You can always use um, a hair dryer to speed up the process, but for this one, I had some time in between. Just going to add in some valleys and shadows by dragging the paintbrush down into the foreground. Giving a little bit more of the area of mountains here, the illusion of rocks, just by adding in some broken small brush strokes with a darker gray. Took a little bit of water on my brush to smooth those out. Uh, I wanted it to look very misty, so you don't want to have any sharp edges. You want this to look like there is light mist. Adding in a little bit of blue here to give the illusion of some water coming in along those rocks. And again, I'm going to just drag that out because we have a lot of fog happening. Using a Q-tip just to lighten up some of these areas. Give a little bit more of an icy feel, getting in some more of that crisp white by removing my color. And again, not being rough with that Q-tip, just lightly pressing it against the surface. Now just mixing up some blue-gray. Again, this painting had a few minutes to dry. So that original painting of those gray wave areas, that is not going to be lifted because that has had some time to dry. So now we are doing a second layer, just a light wash over what I had already painted. Again, I'm mixing a blue with some gray and just dragging small horizontal wave lines with a slight curve to them. And you, you don't want them to ever meet perfectly. You want them to be more staggered. And you can just add in as many areas of small waves as you like. I always like to get my um, horizon line the darkest. So as that is on the top, I'm going to have that darker. Going back in here, adding some darker tones with, again, my blue and my gray mixed. Creating the illusion of some darker areas of rocks or trees, just again using my uh, darker color with my gray and dabbing that off a little bit. I wanted it to, again, be a little bit blurry because we have a lot of fog happening there. Going to go back in now and use some of my yellow, mixing that in with my green to give a nice bright yellow green. This is going to give more of a look of grass, a little bit more feel of spring, a little warmth to the ground. We had a lot of uh, the, the gray that was mixed in with the green. Now I'm just mixing in some browns. Again, you want to think of earth tones, so this one is going to have more of like a little forest near a beach scene, so I do like the color of that sand tone, that's why I mixed in a little bit of brown. Um, I'm not using that brown in other areas, the other paintings, because this, again, this painting has uh, more of a feel of a cliff with some trees and some sand, so this is areas that I'm just adding in as if you are maybe standing on a sand dune and looking out at what you see.
going in and adding some blue. This is where the ocean is meeting that shoreline. And again, I'm using a, a nice light wash, barely adding a lot of color, just a nice light blue gray. And that's going to drift right up along any areas that we had as that sand tone. Just lightening it up a little bit more where it meets the edge of the shoreline and I'm using my q-tip now normally if I was working bigger I'd be using a paper towel but to remove that I'm just going back in with a q-tip just adding in some more details to the trees different areas and different shades of greens and yellow greens just to brighten it up slightly Okay, now I'm going to give a little bit more definition to where that water is breaking along the shoreline. So I'm using that slight light gray and again just dragging out small areas of horizontal lines. So you can see that where the blue meets the gray, I left a little bit of white there and I removed that with the q-tip because you want that to be where the sea foam is meeting the sand. Taking a gray brown and defining the area of where our green or our lush or greenery is meeting that beach line, just darkening in a little bit more definition into the trees that are closer to us, uh, the branches and things like that, and adding in a little bit of the grass that's close to us, just for a little bit more definition. These are small little ripples in the water, so I just, again, a very thin, fine amount of that darker gray blue, and I'm just starting to have that blend in. So this is gonna give the appearance more of some broken waves. So I'm gonna go in and get a little bit richer with my blue, had a little too much gray here. So again, it had a few minutes to dry, so this is gonna be another layer with a blue. taking a little bit deeper of that blue-gray and creating a little bit more defined waves. And again, these are short, mostly horizontal uh, dashed lines with a slight curve to them. You can add as many or as little as you want. To add a little bit of reflection on your water, you just leave areas of white. I'm pulling in a little bit more of a turquoise on top just to give a little bit of richness and a little pop of color. And I think we're done. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and stay tuned for more spring paintings that are going to be coming up. This is always my favorite part to do the big reveal, removing this tape, and I can always cut these down and frame them separately or hang them together. Hope you all enjoyed.